Hello everyone, this is the morning of March 24th. Um, today I'm going to be talking about in fact and this in fact. So there's some news I want to share. Maybe you're seeing the beginning of the end of this pandemic. Get that out of the way. So let's get on with it. I know I just made a ranting video yesterday and um, um, you know, there's some these are the information you need to share. Okay, so let's get on with the good news first. Um, not one, but two treatments look very promising. So President Trump actually spoke about them um, during press conference a couple of days ago. And uh, uh, Dr. Fauci said uh, he's a scientist. He's not going to, you know, jump the gun just yet. But um, uh, let's examine them. Okay, so let's talk about, talk about the most promising one. It's called Remdesivir. Remdesivir. That's approved by FDA as an orphan drug. Um, um, I'll give you some history uh, if you're not following this closely. Remdesivir is delivered, um, I spoke about it briefly earlier. It's uh, developed by Gilead. Um, that's a company, it's a pharmaceutical company, that um, it is meant to treat, if I believe I was. Um, it's meant to treat um, Ebola in the beginning. So, in 2013, I believe, it was first developed uh, somewhere around there, like five, six years ago. And then, uh, this time, um, the first case, one of the first cases in Seattle um, that came from Wuhan, tried this drug when he was um, in ICU um, under um, some sort of special arrangement, um, like uh, Mercy. Um, arrangement of some sort that they can use unapproved experimental drugs. So a lot of cancer patients, in, you know, sent on to those. Uh, but anyway, so he's the first one that got cured by this um, drug. And then the news got out and uh, China started, uh, well, Jilly started going to China to um, test their this drug in a clinical trial. And uh, it's not and the results, the actual double blind study results will not come out for another two, three weeks from today. But all the people have seen it, they say that the drug's very effective and they can pretty much tell um, the difference but for the patients who's taken this drug and versus the patients who's taken the, um, the placebo um, sugar pills. Anyway, so that those are the words, but then there are some um, so it seems most effective and promising, but there's some unknown side effects. So it's, <clears throat> it has, um, I don't know, I don't know it's, it's what the side effects are, but uh, the, the drug has been around, it's been through some testing, minimal testing against uh, malaria. Uh, I'm sorry, not malaria, but uh, against Ebola. But uh, it's an antiviral drug, um, but there's no significant warning signs yet. So uh, we don't know that until like later. Because some long-term um, side effects we'll never know until like time elapses. Um, yeah, that's that's that. So now it comes to the question of production cap capacity, right? Of uh, gel lead. Or maybe you know you should go get in on their stocks. This is the time. I don't know if they're public traded, but uh, the production capacity, delivery to you know um, um, to the hospitals and cost issues. Are they going to be covered by insurance? Things like that. Those are still unknown, but the, as time goes by, they should be hashed out. So um, I think, you know, this will keep you alive um, if you're really, really sick. Um, also, there's another one. It's called the hydro hydroxy chlorate, hydroxy chlorate, hydroxy chloroquine. And uh, used together with azith, azith, rom. <laughs> okay, you try to say it, okay? So this one, the first one is an antiviral drug that's used to treat malaria, okay? So it's been around and uh, it's been used widely. Prescription, prescription only drug. And this one is uh, used to, uh, is an antibiotics. It's uh, used to treat, uh, treat pink eye a lot, okay? So, you know, uh, this is a virus infection. So why do we need the antibiotics? Is that when your lungs are attacked, your respiratory system is attacked, and the immune system is overworked. Usually, even if the virus gets away or gets gets you know gets killed by your immune system, get defeated. I guess that's the word. Um, 
it could still have uh, uh, vi um, bacterial infections. So that's where the antibiotics come in, in the later stage. So as I understand, that's how they are going to use it. So uh, probably these will keep you alive with some side effects, but uh, you, know, uh, you know, better than dead, right? So um, I think a French doctor uh, started using these and um, they've been very, very promising. So we don't know the details and uh, people from Stanford have spoken about them. I didn't really get into the details, but uh, these are the drugs that um, President Trump spoke of. And Dr. Fauci was like, hold your horses, right? But as long as there are some hope, I guess this is good news. Um, so probably if they start de deploying these drugs, we will not see too many deaths, okay? However, still, this is a very potent, uh, potent virus, the coronavirus. And if you get it, and if you have some severe symptoms, it might probably, it's probably going to leave a mark. So um, uh, from Dr. Um, Campos' uh, video, he said, you know, the report from Italy is saying that about 30% of uh, the infected are having severe symptoms or even death, right? 30%. So again, we don't want to get it. Nobody wants to get it. Let's keep it low because the drugs may not be there. The drugs, the, the doctors may not be comf comfortable prescribing these and they need some time to get used to them. So they're working with these drugs, probably they're, well, they're starting to look into that. So it will take some time for the medical system to, to adapt these, you know, different measures to, to treat people. So meanwhile, we still need to stay quarantined or stay isolated and distance ourselves from, you know, everybody else. So that's, that's our best hope. So even with these drugs, getting infected will not be nice, right? Um, so still, the coronavirus, until a vaccine comes out, um, or you know, somehow mir mir miraculously just disappear, like the like SARS and Merck's, then we are looking, still looking at a long-term battle with this uh, pandemic. So I want to speak to you about virus density factors. Okay, <clears throat> so you don't, you probably won't get um, infected if there's just one virus, no, one little thing, tiny particle that comes in contact with you, right? Probably not, so. But to have like 100, 1,000, or 10,000, when the density of the environment of the virus within your immediate environment um, goes up, your risk of contracting this disease go up, right? So that's the thing we need to pay attention to, um, to prevent ourselves from getting this virus. <clears throat> so again, nothing beats staying at home and do nothing right but you know we're, we're not you know frozen or anything um if we can just do a han solo you know frozen thing to everybody for like two months then everybody should be safe <laughs> but when somebody has to stay behind to or freeze everybody but you know if that one person is healthy then the world is saved anyway too much um how many um so how the the, the density factors um sort of ran well rank them from high to low right how many infected people are around you so let's say if your family one person gets it and then another person you know gets it without knowing then the virus starts brewing in their bodies and multiplying then um, chances are everybody else in the family are starting to be exposed to this high density right and also what stages there are in are they in so in the beginning stages um, sometimes there's might be no symptoms there'll be you know um, benign period where, you know, hidden period um, that there's nothing, you don't even know, they don't even know they have it. Uh, but still the virus may be multiply, uh, multiplying. Um, so, you know, but I guess at the, you know, reach, when it reaches a certain time, then the virus starts outbreaking a little bit more, they start sneezing and coughing, then that's probably more, you know, higher density factor. Um, so the, the first thing is how many people are infected. So if you live at a, a higher density place, like a, a inner city or a, like in Manhattan, like New York, if you live in a really tall apartment building with you know a lot of people close by, then you know chances are you have a you know higher density places around you. And also the virus can stay on surfaces, stay um, not alive because viruses are not alive by definition when they're not in the host 
but um, they are active. They, are st they can still be uh, dangerous when they are outside of the body. So this coronavirus is notorious for that. It could be carried in little aerosol gel, sort of, you know, your breath and uh, whatever you speak and, you know, your spit uh, comes out and um, flows around. So that can be, you know, that can be passed around to, to quite a distance. And whatever that settles down on different surfaces, um, they can still, you know, if somebody touches it and lick their finger, <laughs> then they can get it through that way too. So that's why people tell you to wash hands. That's why I tell people to wear masks, right? Although masks don't prevent uh, all of this, and uh, but it does, you know, block in and it does contain sort of limits the, the ability for these um, viruses to float around in the air. Just, you know, simple as that. So this goes into what they're doing, coughing, sneezing, and talking. Obviously, you know, that can uh, propel the virus from, you know, from themselves and then keep them, give them some kinetic energy to spread around. Basically, you know, just kick them farther away into different places. <clears throat> and also the second factor is how well you're protected yourself. You have masks, you know, if you wear them cor correctly, they provide a filter. Not, not, no mask, I would say, well, I shouldn't say that because there's some biomedical suits that can, uh, or the space suits uh, for astronauts, they definitely keep everything out, but just normal masks, even the N95 ones, will not filter out every single little particle and every single virus particle. But they do filter out most of it, so that's what, where we, we need to worry about the density. N95, if they filter out 95% of it, then you reduce the density to a low threshold. So under that certain threshold, you may not be infected. So maybe that can just give you the, the, the difference, make the difference. So gloves are also important, but you got to use them properly. You can't be wearing gloves and do everything and get dirty and then start like, you know, wiping your face with them or things like that. Uh, different clothing, goggles, um, goggles also. Clothing, you know, you got to be careful. Um, things get stuck on your clothes. Shoes, very much so. Somebody may, you know, sneeze and then they may appear to be sneezing into their elbows, but then some particles may flow out and flow around and then land on something. They can survive for hours and sometimes even days on different surfaces. You may be stepping on them. You may carry a little bit. Again, it's the density factor, right? So if you have a lot of people around you, you're going into crowded spaces, even if we do the social distancing, say the market, right? People need to buy stuff. When you go to the supermarket, you may not see like uh, a million people in there. Not a million, not like a hundred. There might be only 10 people. But throughout the day, people come in and out, in and out, in and out. A lot of people get to that place. And uh, supermarkets tend to have um, cooler temperature inside to keep the food fresh from the bacterial uh, growth and um, fungal growth. You, know, you don't want things to go moldy. So supermarkets are cool, right, for the most parts. Um, we're not talking about a soup pot, right? But uh, the, in a cooler environment, these viruses, um, the coronavirus this time, stay active for longer outside of, your, uh, outside of the body. Okay, so that's the thing we gotta worry about. Supermarket may be a real good um, place to spread. So, say a bunch of people who don't know they have it, they go, you know, just randomly go into a market, and then for some reason they leave some trails, you know, from on handles on the shopping cart handles and things like that. And then those are the places other people may pick them up. And then because of this virus gets into different bodies and then they start incubating, start, you know, multiplying, then we get a whole bunch more. And then after a few days, those people return to the same market, they will carry some more viruses back. So that increases the density of the environment of the this virus. And then that increases the danger. Um, and the worst part is that it's unseen. You can't tell what it is and where it is. Okay, so also we need to um, worry about how much of the virus is delivered to your mucosa. Mucosa is your nose, the in, inside of your nostrils where, you know, the mucus comes out and uh, your throat and where it's wet, eyes, you know. Basically, um, if you look at your dog's nose, tip of your nose, it's always wet. So we have parts that are not outside that's always wet, but, you know, on our, in our throat and nose and basically they're all connected. They have to stay wet. 
So those are the parts that are most vulnerable. Well, not most vulnerable. Those are the parts that the uh, coronavirus attacks. So once they get in there, they start multiplying, and then it goes down into your um, respiratory tract, and then finally arrive in your lungs, and you know it's gonna be bad. <coughs> anyway, so delivery. So finger licking, nose picking, eye rubbing. What else do you have? Think of something. Um, toilet seat licking. Do you see that somebody? Do you see that lady licking the toilet seat? That's crazy, right? Okay. Also, how many are you delivering to your mucosa? Or, you know, maybe you don't directly get in, but, you know, you carry some on your hands and then rub some on your face and then pick up a piece of uh, pizza to, to eat. And then you get, you know, gradually through these kind of transfers, you can get those um, viruses into, into your body. Okay? And how many are you getting rid of? So hand washing, nostril washing. Yeah, nostril washing. So use soap. Okay, wash your nostrils. Clothes, clothes washing, right? And um, basically, you know, be careful with your clothing items and even hair, right? Um, you need to wipe off your items with, uh, you know, I don't know how much wiping does because um, viruses are not like bacteria. You know, spraying with alcohol, it helps, but, uh, you know, there's no definite proof that they work 100%. But they definitely help. Any sort of little measures are important, okay? So whatever you can think of, whatever I spoke of, you know, basically don't touch anything. Bring the pencil to poke around, right? Just a number two pencil with a little um, eraser tip that can be really helpful. You know, um, if you have gloves, like one time, you know, a latex gloves, those are used. You know, you just use them to go to the gas station and then gas it, and then just throw them away before you return to the car. So don't touch all those things that everybody else touch. You know. Um, so just common sense, heightened common sense goes back to that. Anyway, so to summarize, this is a really long video, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's, we are at a stage where, you know, things might start changing a little bit. So if we're looking at our curves, we've been on a rise. But right now I just see a little bit of dying off, but who knows? If we look at our daily increase, there's a huge bump here, and then, but then it goes back to following the same curve. So it's still exponential growth. But who knows, it might slow down, right, soon. Because people started acting with better judgment, right? So I know there's still crazy, stupid people out there, but uh, hey, there's active cases, same thing. Anyhow, um, stay in, hang in there. Uh, I just got some news that Wuhan, the first epicenter of um, this pandemic, is there they're easing off the restrictions so they're looking at april 8th okay the the you know the morning of april 8th to to just basically um lift the the shutdown so what that means precisely we don't know and then they've been postponing it and postponing it but hopefully you know this time they do it with confidence and everybody still you know exercise, exercise caution so we don't see a comeback of the um, pandemic or epidemic in that city. I've got family there. I've got friends there. Um, so they've been shut down since January 23rd. So what is it? Two and a half months? Yeah, about two and a half months. Okay, so uh, we are looking... When did we start shut shutdown? Like just basically last week, right? We in Southern California or California are looking at uh, May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. So that's like, what is it? A month and a half? A little bit more? Well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully things get co under control through different methods. But uh, yes, hang in there. Pass this information out. Don't go crazy, okay? I know I gave some good news, but these good news are going to be delayed. They don't, they don't come out immediately, right? So, and uh, they pretty much depends on us, you know, still keep our hands off each other for the next month and a half to to work basically so we got to watch this uh watch these things develop right and at the same time exercise caution and worry about your virus density around you don't go to places that may have high density even if you think there's nobody around there again maybe you go to you, know, you think oh i go shopping at midnight or, or whatever like, so nobody's there but people have been there viruses you know stay there stay active for hours and days 
So, you know, don't act recklessly. Pretend that, you know, you're surrounded by viruses and, um, you know, everything is a potential danger. Okay. Every single item. Oh, your mailboxes. When you get your mail, you know, uh, wear a glove and then set it on the side. Um, I found out that you can't, you know, you shouldn't be spraying your mail, right, with alcohol because uh, it's going to mess things up a little bit. So maybe the UV lamp can, can pretty work on these things. Just shine them through and toss the things that you don't need, you know. Okay, um, have a good day, and uh, I really, really hope, I know I tell everybody, I told everybody to spread my video, and I still have here, and subscribe and bell it, so to, to get the latest and greatest information, right? But I really hope I don't have to do this for, for too long, and uh, we really see a turnaround, and everything, you know, calms down, and everybody has the knowledge. Okay. I'm rambling on, but um, that's it. That's it. So good luck, everyone, and uh, stay safe.